came out, didn't start off too well. Um, they were driving on our slant routes as they were all game, which obviously ended up being a weakness for them in the last play of the game there. Um, Coach Sanford and Coach Kelly always say, you know, in a two-minute drill, the best thing to do is get the first first, first down. And obviously we got it, we got rolling, got into a little rhythm. And once you're in a rhythm, it's kind of hard to stop the Irish. You know, we got some of the best receivers in the country. And when, when I have targets like that to throw to, it makes the job pretty easy for me. So. Were you thinking touchdown or just getting the field? You know, I, I didn't notice the time um, until about literally right when the ball snapped and picked up and noticed there's 20 seconds left. And at that point in time, it was like, all right, we got to make something happen. You know, we're, we're right on that borderline field goal um, touchdown range. And uh, so we obviously they gave me, gave me a shot play and we took the shot and obviously it ended up pretty good for the marriage. Deshaun, it's your football team now. How prepared do you think you are to handle What's facing you starting this coming week with Georgia Tech? Well, you know, Coach Kelly always talks about next man in. So uh, since day one, um, which started way back in, in June, I've been, par- been preparing as if I was going to be the guy. Um, uh, I try to compete my, my butt off against the league all camp and uh, expecting for, for some time to, to come uh, eventually throughout the season. And, and now it's here. And now i got to look at the guys, some of these seniors in the eye, and let them know that I'm the guy. Uh, might, might be. A little different, you know. Obviously, you're going from a guy like Malik, who is a very bright and outspoken guy, and I'm not really that, not really that type of guy. But obviously, I'm going to have to change my ways and, and and learn how to, you know, where, where my place is on this team. So we'll, we'll see how this goes, and obviously, we'll prepare for Georgia Tech next week. And we'll you, have no, you have no question about your own confidence. No, not at all. Not at all. You know, I, um, I've been ready for a while now. I, I honestly believe. I have all the confidence in the world, my ability to, to be the quarterback in Notre Dame, and now it's, it's my time to go. When you had the read on, on fourth down, when you had the two, three yard run, mm-hmm. you know, what, what did you see there? Coach said it was up to you whether it be a pass or a run. You know, what did you see on that? You know, I knew it was going to be a tough run. I'll tell you that. Uh, man, are those guys good. They're, they're, they, they came out to play. That defense was, was, was really on it. Um, I knew that there was going to be a tight hole. Um, I couldn't. They, they were doing a good job disguising their the coverages. Uh, I didn't necessarily think that with the, the way that they drove on Will Fuller's slant earlier in the drive. I didn't know if it was necessarily the best to go to quick game, so I kept myself and just kind of try to grind it out for two yards. Two yards isn't necessarily the, the longest run in the world, and I, I knew that I could fall over and hopefully you know, get to that line. What's going through your mind when they're looking at Malik and? You know, they tell you to start getting ready. What's, what's running through your mind on all that? No, not much. It's kind of weird. You know, I expected that I was going to be very, very nervous when that time came. And, you know, obviously I, I go to bed the night before a game, trying to prepare myself for that moment to happen. And I just kind of blanked. I just, it was time to play football. That, that's the only way I could look at it. It was just, you know, I looked at, you know, Jalen Smith coming off the field and then Sheldon Day come off the field and look at me and said, hey, look, you got to win us a game here. And that, that's the only thing I had in my mind. I wasn't going to be the guy to go out there and, and quote unquote lose a game for the Irish. I, um, I, I prepared way too much. We prepared way too much. We put in way too much work for for me to go out there and not get nothing but my best and, and hopefully come out with a victory. Like anybody say anything that would have stuck with you, whether it be Sanford on that set or BK or you know, you mentioned Jalen and Sheldon? It was J- Jalen's words really stuck with me. Um, Jalen came up to him and he said he trusted him. And Jalen, as we all know, doesn't say too much. And uh, he, he's a very like to himself guy. He only he only really speaks up when when really spoken to, and when he's put into a, a very serious position. And he came up to me and he said, hey, "Look, I, I trust in you. We got to go win a game here. We didn't get the stuff that we needed. Now I need you to take it over." And obviously, we went out there, and with that in mind, there was no stopping the Irish. We we we. Coach Sanford and I talked earlier today about the 2012 team and how they, and how they went about their season. They, they talked about never losing. And you just kind of have to have that mindset to refuse to lose. And that kind of you know, soaked in in that last drive that you, you can't lose in that situation. How much did you remember about that team and what Reese did and all that? Um, you know, I, I didn't really follow too much in the season. Um, but I knew that they were a, a very, very hard-nosed, you know, back-to-the-wall type team. I knew their defense was very, very good, just like ours is this year. Um, I, w- I don't want to necessarily compare the teams, but I, I think that we have 
some great guys this year, and hopefully we can you know head in the same direction with that team. Do you understand why teams defend Will Fuller the way that they do? No, it's it's a scheme. We we go in week in and week out and plan on how we're going to get our playmakers the ball. Whether it's Will Fuller, whether it's Amir Carlisle, whether it's you know, our tight end play, or our backside receivers with Breezy and Court Robinson. Um, the, you got You got it. Obviously, you got a dink and dunk team because people play top down on us. We got. We, we like to push the ball up the field. Uh, we saw it last year. We saw it in the Texas game. We like to push the ball up the field. So in order for things like the last play of the game to happen, you got to. You got to. You know, play catch a little bit, and throw the ball short, and get them. You know, coming up on the ball, and eventually, hopefully, you call it at the right time for a play like the last play of the game to happen. Those two series right before the game when you touched that drive did not go well for you guys. What was kind of your mentality going into that drive? And uh, you guys, did you, did you do anything better on that from that last series there? Yeah, you know, it's all about you know, being comfortable. Um, in that first you know, drive, I came out, it was very slow. You know, I was being a typical, you know, freshman QB out there for his first drive, first series drive. And uh, it took too long to get my, my protection down, and all of a sudden there's two seconds on the clock, and I'm clapping for the ball, and airing up trying to hit the ball, and now my feet, my footwork, you know, doesn't isn't the best, and I end up throwing the ball right into Derek my first play. That's not obviously not the way I wanted to start it. And, uh, so I we, we continue to go, and the offensive line continue to say, hey, look, we got you as long as you got us. And you know, as you get comfortable and you really start setting in, you start playing the game that you you know you've been playing, I've been playing since I was in fourth grade. You know, it all becomes. I mean, you, you saw the pass to CJ Prosize rolling up right and throwing it back left. That's just that's just playing ball. That's the only way you can look at it. Anything else, guys? The uh, the fourth down run in the game-winning drive. How did that uh, evolve from the point of view? And then, of course, the uh, game-winning catch. Um, fourth down run. Obviously, uh, went into call a timeout. Had to burn one there to get the perfect play call. And we understood that they, they were playing, like we said, top down, and, and they didn't want anything to go deep on them. And then all of a sudden, it changed that complete mentality to drive up on our route. So we knew that if we gave a run pass option and um, got into a, a, the right play at the right time, that we were going to be able to grab it. So obviously, I ended up keeping the ball and, and falling over for the first time that we needed. And the last play of the game, um, as I mentioned before, um, didn't necessarily know that I had the amount of time that I had on the clock, so I was thinking field goal the whole drive, um, just just kind of dink and dunk them, you know, throw a dig backside, throw a slant here, throw you know, come back there, and all of a sudden, um, 20 seconds left, and, and we, they give me a shot play. And as Coach Denbrock said right before the drive, all you got to do is execute the plays that we call them. You don't have to call anything on your own. You don't have to make any crazy checks. Just whatever we call, and just try to execute it. And obviously, they call it double move Will Fuller. I, Grateful that I executed. Because you pulled off that drive, I mean, how much confidence does that give you going forward, and how much you think it gives the team confidence in you, in you going forward? I can't, I can't necessarily speak for my team and how they feel. Just, you know, I know that you know, they, they made a great adjustment from Everett to Malik, and now hopefully they'll adjust to me. We all have different leader, uh, leadership styles, and, and hopefully that, that my team will you know, help me out and pull me up into the position I need to be in to lead the Irish to each other one and one next week. Was that aftermath of that touchdown something that you remember at all, or was it just kind of a blur? Do you remember anybody coming up and saying anything to you? Um, it was kind of a blur. I'm gonna be honest. I, uh, once I let go of the ball, I thought I thought I underthrew him. It's, it's just kind of instinct that when you throw the ball to Will Fuller, you underthrow him. <laughs> so uh, when I saw that he was striding out and he was chasing the ball down, I knew there was a good shot that he's gonna catch it. Didn't necessarily knew he caught it right away. Um, but I, I saw Nick Martin taking a, a you know, dead on sprint to the end zone. I decided to follow him and saw him both holding <laughs> in the back of the end zone here. So that, that was obviously a very, very big moment in my career. Did you, had, did you know that was a touchdown before the snap? I mean, did you know that's where the ball was going, or did you need to see some things happen? Not at all. Um, like I said, they, were, they, they played so in the first half, they're playing so top down. They're backing up and, and you know expecting us to throw the ball short. And I'm um, trying to make it throw the ball short, so I did not necessarily know that that was going to be a time where they're going to you know, drive on the ball. Obviously, with 20 seconds left, you expect guys to play deep. You expect them to keep everything in front of them. So I, I didn't necessarily think that that was going to be the right way to go. Um, obviously, I keyed on the corner, and the corner drove in the route, and Wolf Fuller's speed is just unreal. So he just kind of left the guy and put the ball out there for him. Thanks, guys.